All right, guys, this is the IXZ mic and guitar interface made by Tascam. This is the packaging. You get a couple batteries included and an owner's manual. You've got a diagram here that shows you basic setup. But of course, we're going to get into this right now and check it out. So let's see what we've got in the box. If it'll come out. All right, so in the box, we've got some papers in Chinese. I'm assuming that's Chinese. Uh, probably a multilingual handout. Yeah, no, yes, yeah, different languages. All right, awesome. Here is what looks to be like the manual, yeah. So different diagrams, again, multiple languages. You're gonna have to go through this to find your language, but I'm pretty sure this is just showing you basic connections, how to put in the battery, how to hook up guitar cables, how to plug in the headset. If you can't figure that out without this piece of paper, you probably shouldn't be using this equipment. All right, let's go on. So we've got the main unit here. It's actually quite light. There we go. So here's the main unit. You can see the mic uh, rick ring tip sleeve input here. So if you have a quarter inch jack, it goes in the middle. If you have a microphone with a XLR type plug, that goes there. Right here, we've got the mode. So you can have off and then instrument and then microphone. This says phantom. This is for your phantom power. And phantom power is a type of power that's sent through the microphone cable that will add to the functionality of certain types of microphones. And I'll talk about and demonstrate that in a second. And then we've got our input volume. This actually should say volume, um, but that's our input volume right there. Okay, and then on the other side, we've got the cord. On the bottom, we've got our battery compartment. So let's pop the batteries in. Looks like you actually get Maxell, which is not too bad. At least it's not some uh, unknown battery that you get in these products sometimes. But you'll probably want to replace these fairly soon with um, some decent batteries. All right, so as usual, springy side goes on the flat part of the battery. Pop those in. There, we're good to go. Let's see if we get any kind of light that comes on. No, just a little indicator here. It's not a light, it's just uh, color coded. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in and it looks like we have a, a microphone indicator light on the top, so let's get that working. We're gonna plug this in. I'm actually gonna plug it into the iPhone that I'm using to shoot this video and then we're gonna check out a couple different microphones. These are the microphones I'm gonna be demonstrating for you guys in this video. Here we've got a dynamic microphone. This does not use the phantom power. And we've got two condenser mics. This one is uh, a mic that would be good for vocals, for podcasting. Uh, you get up really close to this mic, you speak into the front. This one is a shotgun mic by Sennheiser. This one is also a powered microphone, so you would use the phantom power for these two. I've also got an extension cable on the IXZ unit so I can plug it into the phone that I'm actually recording this video on. It's got the um, tip ring ring sleeve connector. So it'll go straight into my phone. You could use that to go into your iPad. I got this cable, it's a 6.5 foot, two meter cable, costs you know under five bucks. All right, so we'll get right to it.
Okay, guys, this is the dynamic mic. This is a typical microphone that you'd find on a stage. Sure, SM57s, 58s, this Audio Technica microphone. Uh, you would use, you could use this for podcasting, uh, but I have a better one coming up in a second, one of the condenser mics. Uh, this mic is, again, being run to the mic input. I've got the mic switch on. Phantom power is off because we're not using that for this particular mic. I've also got the volume all the way up, input volume. So that's what this sounds like. Uh, you need to get close to this mic to get uh, a decent sound. I don't have any pop filter on this, but if you are going to be using it for podcasting, then you want to use some sort of foam filter or a cover, or even a sock would work. All right, so that's this mic. Let's move on and check out another one. Okay, this is the Sennheiser shotgun mic, and you can tell right away that there's a big difference between the dynamic mic and this mic. Uh, for this one, of course, I have turned the phantom power on, and I still have the volume input volume all the way up, just because I've noticed that this unit does not have a super high uh, signal-to-noise ratio, so you're going to have to crank the volume up, I think, for just about everything. Uh, this mic is good for recording interviews, um, people that are in a space where you don't necessarily want to have a microphone, but you still want to capture the sound. This is a directional mic. You usually uh, would have this a few feet away from your subject. So I use this for recording videos where I'm demonstrating something. I want to have it pick up my talking, but I also want to have it pick up other things like instruments and so forth. So this is that Sennheiser shotgun. All right, we'll move on and get to our last mic. Okay, this is the final microphone. And I want to point out that although I do have the headphone plugged in, the headphones do not monitor your microphone sound. So you can turn the volume up and down here. It's not going to change what's in your headphones. What's in my headphones right now is absolutely nothing. You would use the headphones if you wanted to monitor from your iPhone or your iPad. If you were, if you were overdubbing and you wanted to add to an existing sound, then you would listen to that in your headphones and you would record to that. But there's no monitoring of the incoming mic or instrument input into the headphone mix. This is a another condenser mic and as you can tell this one has a pretty good sound. It would be good for podcasting, broadcasting. It's also a good bass drum mic or good for drums. So um, this gives you an idea of a few mic choices. I'm fairly happy with the sound of the IXC to this point. There's a little bit of hiss, background hiss, which um, may be reduced if I get rid of that extension cable that's going into the phone. You're pretty much what is suffering at this point. Um, it could be the IXE. It could be the iPhone circuitry. You know, usually on a phone or an iPad, you're not going to have the best um, A to D or analog to digital converters, and that's probably what's causing some of the hiss. I'd have to do some more testing with some other gear to figure out if it's that or if it's the IXE. But I think for around 40 bucks, this little guy is a great value. It's really good for taking on the road, or if you don't have professional recording equipment, you just have your phone, then this would be a serious upgrade for anyone looking to do videos, podcasting, or even making some demo recordings. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and you got a lot out of it. If so, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. I'm going to leave you with one final uh, little bit of recording that I did on an electric ukulele so you can hear what that would sound like. Uh, your results may vary. All right, you guys, thanks for watching this. Go out and make some great music.